It's time for the main event. Davis, Santa Cruz. Mo, let's get it. All right, BC, let's get it. Indeed, main event time, Alamo Dome in San Antonio, Texas. Gervonta Davis, the 135-pound belt holder whose 957 knockout percentage is second highest of all Ring Magazine ranked fighters behind light heavyweight champ Arter Beterbiev. He passed his first test on the scale and now faces a different kind of test in Santa Cruz, thought to be the physically smaller of the two, but he showed off added muscle when he weighed in for the biggest opportunity of his career. These two warriors who have overcome an abundance of adver adversity out of the ring are about to encounter what is supposed to be their biggest form of adversity inside the ropes, each other. Gervonta Tank Davis has certainly been embraced by the hip hop community, including superstar rapper Lil Uzi Vert, and all the ingredients have been put in place for Tank Davis to become a legitimate boxing star. He's proven to be a bona fide ticket seller, and now in Leo Santa Cruz has the kind of dance partner who could legitimize his status, who wants to follow in the footsteps of his promoter Floyd Money Mayweather. Now, Money Mayweather began his big money pay-per-view runs by facing Oscar De La Hoya. He was dressed in a sombrero. I don't know if it was as respectful as is intended tonight. As you see, Mayweather, I think Gervonta Davis showing some respect for the Mexican audience in attendance as he hopes to launch his pay-per-view career success. And that's been a calling card of both these fighters for this fight. I mentioned it earlier on the broadcast. They've shown respect for each other. They've called out, they've called attention to the strengths of their opponent, not creating a silly feud. And you know, he went out to Las Vegas, as you pointed out earlier, trained with Flo in Floyd Mayweather's gym. He and Calvin Ford felt that it was a perfect fit, and they think that preparation will lead them to uh, a victory here tonight. And we'll look at the numbers for these two fighters. And uh, one of the most important things, they're not huge edges, but the height and reach for Leo Santa Cruz, he believes they're gonna have to be his ticket to a win in this fight. And after we alluded to it, he's gotta fight tall and he's gotta use that height and reach. And the rules for the main event, there is no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. If an accidental foul or headbutt causes a fight to end within four rounds, it's a no decision. After four rounds, they go to the scorecards for a technical decision. It's all Hallows Eve. It's a showdown in the Lone Star State here at the Alamo Dome. It's time once again for Jimmy Lennon. Junior! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Alamo Dome here in the beautiful city of San Antonio, Texas, as Premier Boxing Champions presents the featured bout of the evening, brought to you by Mayweather Promotions. TGB Promotions, GTD Promotions, Santa Cruz Boxing Club, and Showtime. Sponsored by proper number 12 Irish Whiskey, the finest, the tastiest, the smoothest liquid gold in the world, and O'Reilly Auto Parts. Order your parts online at O'ReillyAuto.com and get free curbside pickup. This bound in the ring is sanctioned by the WBA, the President Gilberto Jesus Mendoza, the Supervisor Julio Time, along with the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulations. The Executive Director is Brian Francis. Introducing our three judges scoring from ringside. From Connecticut, Glenn Feldman. From California, Alejandro Ruchin. And from Oklahoma, David Sutherland. Introducing our referee in charge, he will be giving instructions after the introductions, Rafael Ramos. All right, fans, here we go with the main event of the evening, 12 rounds of boxing for the WBA Super Featherweight and WBA Lightweight Championship of the World. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, Live from San Antonio, Texas, it's showtime! <laughs> Introducing
introducing to you first on my right, the lightweight world champion fighting out of the blue corner, entering the ring wearing white trunks with red and green trim, hailing from and representing his home of Baltimore, Maryland. He weighed in at a ready 129 and three quarter pounds with a sensational record of 23 wins, no losses. He has 22 big wins coming by way of knockout. Formerly boxing's youngest world champion, he is the popular and acclaimed three-time two-division world champion. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the hard-hitting, current, reigning and defending, undefeated WBA lightweight champion of the world, introducing Gervonta. across the ring the super featherweight world champion fighting out of the red corner entering the ring wearing black trunks with multi-color trim from los angeles california and representing his heritage of Huetamo, michoacan mexico he weighed in at 129 and one half pounds having faced seven world champions in his illustrious career his record stands at 37 wins, one loss, one draw, with 19 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, in his 18th world title appearance, here is the renowned four-division world champion, the current WBA featherweight world champion, and the current reigning and defending WBA super featherweight champion of the world, introducing Rafael Ramos. Davis. You received the pre-fight instruction. Recibiste las instrucciones. Protect yourself. Protégete todo el tiempo. Give me a clean fight. Una pelea limpia. Buena suerte. Good luck. Good luck. Referee Rafael Ramos, 30 years experience, his 483rd pro bout, both Santa Cruz and Davis, a combined 23 and 1 in major title fights. Santa Cruz usually throws punches like internet trolls, throw shade. He wanted to silence his critics, and he just called out one of the biggest punchers in Javante Davis. There's a reason. Davis is Mike Tyson's favorite fighter. And this is round number one, the 130-pound belt holder, Santa Cruz, in black, green, orange, and gold. The 135-pound belt holder, Javante Davis, in the red, white, and green. And there's a counter, left uppercut by Davis. So much as Al Santa Cruz wants to establish the jab. Yes, he does. He, you know, he lands, he throws 33 jabs per round normally, lands seven. Whether he'll be as much of a volume puncher in this match early remains to be seen. Abner, you've been in the ring twice with Santa Cruz. You trained to face Davis. What are you picking up early on? I like how Santa Cruz is trying to stay disciplined with that jab. He's trying to work uh, his jab and move backwards a bit. He's got to turn Davis, though, to his left um, and not extend the jab because when, when he does that, I already saw early on that Davis counter punches with that left. Yeah, that left uppercut has, has been there. Santa Cruz goes upstairs. You know, the, the combination punching of Santa Ooh. Cruz can push Davis back, and that would be interesting to see. Davis doesn't normally fight going backwards. Again, Davis winding up with that left uppercut. Already blood on the face of Leo Santa Cruz. Bridge of his nose, it looks like. There's a right hand, a right hook behind the guard. Santa Cruz comes back with a right bounced off Davis' glove. Well, this fight is starting out the way Davis wants it to. He wants it to be this kind of give and take. 
And it's kind of interesting because I would think the other way. I would think that Davis will be the fighter that would want to be in the outside, pick his punches, but no, he's the pressure fight. He's the pressure fighter in this fight. He's pressuring the, the, so, the bully that Santa Cruz is used to being the put bully, pushing a, a fighter back. But now we see Davis picking his punches as Santa Cruz at moments, he, he, he does land also. Davis off to a quick start, of course, apparently made weight fairly easily. Maybe confident about going into deep waters. Remember, Santa Cruz said that Davis is dangerous for the first six rounds and then begins to fade. That's where Santa Cruz wants to bring Davis is into the deeper waters as they exchange Davis. Pushdown referee rules it. No knockdown. And the just over 9,000 fans in attendance. If the introductions were any indication, all the fans might be cheering on both fighters. Great start here. Round number one. An electric atmosphere at the Alamo Dome. Hey, Chito. Tú, tú, tú siempre te como, como tú quieras, ¿ok? No te vamos a decir como tú vas a ver cómo pelea adentro. ¿Ok, Chito? Hey, ya, está, ya se está cansando. This was not a knockdown, but instead a slip. It came at a time when Santa Cruz was being aggressive. You can't fight him on the inside. Now, there was a jab that landed and a right hand, kind of off the top of their feet. But it was their feet that created the uh, going down for Davis. So, not called a knockdown. And another look at it will demonstrate that it was their feet that kind of got wrapped up with each other, even though Santa Cruz was pushing forward. An appropriate call on that in what was a very interesting round one. The bell and round number two. Davis has never been down as a pro. Leo Santa Cruz officially down once, but the referee actually apologized to him after for missing the fact that the punch was a rabbit punch. Santa Cruz delivering the jab, trying to split the guard, leads with the right hand, putting pressure on Davis early in round two. Intriguing. You know, already Leo Santa Cruz, you can get the feeling he thinks he can push Davis back in this fight. Will that be the proper move for him? He's landing some nice punches. Well, Abner, the narrative coming in was that Santa Cruz was the, the smaller guy. We saw it the way in. He had added muscle, and, and that does not seem to be the case against definitely a more compact, harder puncher. But Santa Cruz is not the smaller guy in this yes. fight. Well, listen, the only reason we said that Santa Cruz, a lot of people would want Santa Cruz to box in the first couple of rounds is because we know David Carey yeah. carries a big punch and we it, it's almost like in the first couple of rounds but it but it but that's the game plan you want to push a Davis back he doesn't know how to fight backwards Davis turns 26 next Saturday Santa Cruz turned 32 in August so the youth is on the side of Davis misses just misses with that counter left uppercut that has yeah. been there for him yeah, you feel that's going to be an important weapon for Davis. He he want, He's trying very hard to get it in. He has to be careful throwing it from too far out. He was countered by uh, Santa Cruz. Just past the midpoint of round two. A compelling confrontation. And already so much to absorb. Oh, but Davis, there goes the sportsmanship. Okay, you okay? Don't do that. Okay, let's go. We talked about Davis perhaps maturing. He's had his issues outside of the ring. And, and Al, you mentioned it at the top of the show. The fact that there was so much respect heading into the showdown. Well, Davis' <laughs> temper getting the better of him there. You can forget about that now. There's a little, some frustration on his part. And that's not always a good thing for a fighter. If you get frustrated, you start draining yourself also mentally. And, um, you know, Santa Cruz doing a fantastic job in this second round. And Davis leaving the distractions of his life in Baltimore. Spent 15 weeks in Las Vegas at the Mayweather Boxing Gym. Said that he would like to hold all of his camps there because of the lack of distractions and the ability to focus. But Santa Cruz now unloading on Davis. Davis rolling with some of those shots and avoiding the right hand. Santa Cruz putting on pressure. It's the combination punching of Santa Cruz. When he is at his best, those combinations oh. flow, but there's that left Counter. uppercut from Davis. Davis timing that left uppercut count. 
counter. Good stuff through two rounds. Well, if round one was intriguing, round two was exciting. Uh, and this, again, would be somebody going to the canvas, but not for a punch. That was, in, you know, pretty blatant throwdown. Now, he's claiming that he was being held, I guess, behind the head. But uh, whatever the case, it was chippy. And this is where Santa Cruz had pushed Davis back and was landing some shots. Not getting everything in there, but throwing combinations and trying to push Davis against the ropes. His mission to back Davis up, which is not the normal posture for um, Gervonta Davis. The Marcus of Queensbury was not pleased. <laughs> no. <laughs> Slow everything down. Slow everything down, Tank here. This is round number three, scheduled for 12. Both belts on the line. Davis 135-pound title, Santa Cruz 130-pound strap. I like what I'm seeing from Leo. He's not throwing wide punches. Uh, he's throwing straight punches, which is making Davis pull right back, and he catches uh, Tank Davis with those punches. It's making Santa Cruz staying at a distance, which is good on his end. You get the feeling Davis is his adapting so far to being pushed back is that he's going to want to try to land that counter left hand a, a big power punch and that's the thing that Santa Cruz has to really be careful of because Davis can land that shot and hurt you. Santa Cruz wants to keep Davis corralled in the there corner but there's a counter left from Davis allows him to escape. Santa Cruz taking small steps and there's a left hook again the left hand missed with the right uppercut. And of course, anything either Santa Cruz or Davis throws, and this is the first time during the pandemic, you know the crowd is going yeah. to react. Yeah. And again, Davis getting physical. Davis also mentioned, of course, working with Floyd Mayweather, he wanted to showcase his ring IQ. He wanted to showcase his, his boxing technique. It was the estimable Emmanuel Stewart who said knockout sell, and knockouts have been Davis' calling card. But he's going to have to dig down deep into those tricks here on Halloween to try to solve a guy who's been a champion in four different weight classes. Davis starting to use the jab, and he has a good jab. It's an underused punch sometimes for him, but it is effective. As Santa Cruz's Twitch signed up for a Twitch account yet, inquiring minds want to know. Left hook by Santa Cruz, another left hand upstairs. Well, this is a fight being fought right in the pocket, and that may be a surprise to some people because we thought Santa Cruz was going to have a little more movement, but it's a pocket fight, and that's going to make it a good fight for the fans. It's in Santa Cruz innate nature. He loves to pump up the volume, and there again, Davis comes back with a couple of left hands, goes to the body. And look at the difference. When Davis is the aggressor, uh, you see a to totally different fight going towards Davis. So Santa Cruz has to keep uh, Davis out of that reach with that jab and push him back. A lot of nervous energy from Santa Cruz. Davis seems, other than that momentary lapse in judgment when he threw Santa Cruz to the ground, seems focused, seems measured. Final 10 seconds of the third. Both fighters headlining their first pay-per-view here tonight. Davis versus Santa Cruz. And Mayweather, Money Mayweather, Floyd Mayweather headlined 16 pay-per-views. Let's listen in. The dapper Floyd Money Mayweather trying to deliver some instructions. Take it. Man, Tank, look, don't pull back. That's how you can catch him here. And remember, when he throw the brick, the one is coming on the other side here, all right? And there's nothing wrong with you getting close to him here and keep your hands up in the inside. You're good, babe. Just take deep breaths. Take deep breaths. We good. We excellent. Hey, aguantale, aguanta ahorita hasta los, hasta los cinco o los seis. De ahí te la boca. De ahí, 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 de ahí,
Back up, back up. So we've already seen Gervonta Davis advance counter-punching ability. And now here, beginning of round four, Leo Santa Cruz double and triple pumping with the jab. Davis uh, averages only 39 punches per round. He's very economical in his punches compared, of course, to Santa Cruz, who we've said sometimes throws upwards of 80, averages 85. But it's the it's the ability to land for Davis, to land with power, that means something. There, Santa Cruz digging to the body. Meanwhile, Davis looking for the angle for that uppercut. You don't always see Davis in that kind of defensive posture that he's in with his hands really high. While you're working with Floyd Mayweather, you better learn defense. <laughs> and there's Santa Cruz through the right, and Davis now loading up again with the left. Left uppercut, right hook by Davis, but Santa Cruz still looking to establish the jab, but he's getting hit. Oh, oh those left hooks of Santa Cruz getting home. An eruption from the crowd here at the Alamo Dome, this main event delivering already. Is this the right strategy for Santa Cruz? He's getting some good work done, but he's taking power punches. You know what this feels like? When Diego Corrales walked in, we thought he would box against Jose Luis Castillo. He stood in the pocket and battled. At first, we thought it was a bad idea. It turned out to be a good idea. What will happen tonight? If this fight turns into one-tenth yeah. the fight of Corrales Castillo won, this is going to be an all-time classic. And I think Santa Cruz is doing the, the a great job. I think he's doing the right thing. And most of these big Good fights, uh, a lot of these fighters, they say, no, you know, I'm going to let him win the first uh, the first half of the fight. I'm going to box. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And then uh, before you know it, you got half of the fight lost. So Santa Cruz doesn't, doesn't want that. He wants to get in some rounds in and, and doing a fantastic job. Both in, David and Santa Cruz, what a fight. Under a minute left in the fourth, Davis walking down Santa Cruz. Davis has gone to the body with the right hook. We've seen the left uppercut. Santa Cruz stealing a glance at his corner. The high guard. There's that long range jab from Santa Cruz. Well, you saw the jab and you saw oh. there, that counter uppercut is just poised for Davis. And he, even when he doesn't throw it, you can see he's ready to throw it. Double jab, then the left hand downstairs by Davis avoids those punches up. from Santa Cruz. And again, stab Santa Cruz in the belly with the left. There's a jab to the midsection by Davis. Rounds are flying by here at the Alamo Dome. We are through four. Javante Davis getting that straight left hand in. That's one of his big power punches. And Santa Cruz trying to counter off that. The uppercut of Davis has been a, a very, very important weapon. The right hook getting in there. But then here he comes with that uppercut on the inside. I'll tell you what. Santa Cruz is taking some big punches from Davis and he's hanging in there right now. Now he did have his good offensive moments. He would land the uppercut on the inside. This is the difference. Santa Cruz is a pure combination puncher. Abner, you know that better than anybody. Yes, he is, and he could be overwhelming. He, that could be overwhelming. That's why I said that Leo Santa Cruz should be the volume puncher in this fight Tank to overwhelm a Tank Davis that's never seen that before. Santa Cruz has thrown 241 punches to 160 for Davis. That's not surprising. This is round number five. Davis leaning on his front foot. High guard, both of them. Double, triple jab by Santa Cruz as he tries to move forward. Davis moving to his left into the power alley of Santa Cruz. Leo has to keep touching him with that jab. You have Davis be thinking. Davis crouching down. He'll like to crouch down, shoot counters that his opponents rarely see coming. We've seen that on occasion tonight. And that left hand is just ready to be uncoiled. Ready to spring out. There's that lead right hook by Davis. 
One of the weapons that Tanakus has found in this fight, and he wants to get back to it, is his own left hook, which is not normally his money punch, but he, it, he's kind of found a home for it. In the counter, left hand glances off the rib cage of Santa Cruz. And another counter left. Santa Cruz delivers a right. We talk about Santa Cruz combination punches. Difficulty putting them together here in the fifth as we move past the midpoint as that, that left bomb is always ready to be returned. You know, Davis has landed some huge power punches here, so you got to give Santa Cruz credit already for being able to take that power. Oh. Doesn't mean he's going to continue to be able to. Known for his durability, his sturdy chin, and yeah, when you're taking shots from a guy like Davis, <laughs> that's saying something. Remember, only one man has gone the distance in Davis's career. 23 and 0, 22 knockouts now. Santa Cruz trying to swarm Davis. I got, Davis. I, I got it. Oh, I got it. Was it a clash of heads? You know, give Davis some credit for slipping a lot of these punches too. He's he, he's not getting hit a lot with those some of those combinations. But when Leo does that, he keeps Davis busy. When t when Leo stays in the back like that, he gives the, Davis the opportunity to land that one two, uh, pick his punches. But when Santa Cruz is aggressive, despite him landing or not, one or two punches is going to land. You know, he keeps Davis you know on his back foot. Right. Final 15 seconds of the fifth. Much more tactical round. Yeah, I was going to say pace uh, baiting a bit. As both of them try to continue to collect data. As Davis again goes downstairs with a left uppercut, sweeping right hook upstairs. Okay, that's it. That's the one. That's the way you do. Now you're going to get him, uh, the lower body. But you got to throw the one two, okay? And keep working the, the lower body. You're doing great. You're doing great. You got to hold him another two rounds, and then it's going to be your fight, Leo. He's going to get tired. No. Nice and slow, nice and slow. Just fix that nose a little bit. Just hold them off, hold them off, and then the second part of this fight is ours. That's it, that's all he's gonna have. That's all he has for this fight, that's it. You'll take it now. Round at number six, Davis, Santa Cruz's first left-handed opponent since March of 2014 when Santa Cruz successfully defended his 122 title against Christian Mijares. Oh, and there's a right downstairs by Santa Cruz that landed with a nice thud. And of course, we saw his dad in there, you know, taking a look and what must be going on in his mind. Nice right hand by Santa Cruz. Really good work from Santa Cruz. He's investing on the body, and that's something you yeah. want to do, especially in this sixth round uh, going into the fight, uh, because as the game plan that he mentioned is to uh, pressure Tank Davis even more uh, after the half of the fight. You know, they are so convinced in that corner that after the sixth, seventh round, they're going to own Davis. They better hope that that's the case. <laughs> yes. But they are, he is doing some fantastic work here, Santa Cruz. They both are chucking leather, and the mark now, a mouse beginning to form under the right eye of Gervonta Davis. So they are throwing punches in bunches here in the sixth. And that, that's courtesy of a couple of those left hooks that Santa Cruz has landed. Santa Cruz putting together his combinations. There's that lead left uppercut on the inside by Davis. What a great round so far for Santa Cruz, though. He has thrown, his combinations have been precise and landing. And that was south of the equator. Davis has never been deducted any points for fouls. 
Went low with that one. Santa Cruz did not eat up much of the five minutes allotted for him to recover, and they continue here. Throwing punches, a minute 11 left in the sixth. I think if I was Santa Cruz, I would have taken more time to, to get myself no punches, together. No punches, that's it. Not Santa in the Santa Cruz, Cruz yeah. DNA. Yeah, I was just going to say, Leo Santa Cruz, do that now. <laughs> yeah, that would be ridiculous, huh? <laughs> There's a left hand by Davis under a minute left in the sixth. Davis now putting together power shots. Landed another thudding left hook. Santa Cruz standing there, taking it. And coming forward with punches of his own. Scintillating stuff here in the sixth round. Gervonta Davis, Leo Santa Cruz, two champions with the hearts of champions. If Davis thought Santa Cruz was going to fold from his power, oh, oh my. There is a lethal left uppercut. in his life. And what's the definition of irony? That was probably Leo Santa Cruz's best round yeah. in the fight, and it ends with him being knocked out for the first time in his career, and you have to feel for the Santa Cruz family. Well, we talked uh, during the, most of this fight about that left uppercut, how it had landed, and it was always at the ready for Davis. And in that round in which Santa Cruz had done so much good work, there's that left uppercut. A counterpunch that just was devastating. And it was there the whole fight. Some big ones landed, but none like that. It's the punch that you don't see that does the most damage. And that punch came out of nowhere. Leo Santa Cruz did not see that uppercut coming. Um, it just and just took him out. But again, you gotta give credit to Leo Santa Cruz. He did something that i I was even, you know, shocked which was stand toe-to-toe -to -toe against the bigger puncher than Javante Davis. He was able to do that for a, a, a good portion of this fight, and they felt that if he'd gotten through these rounds, he was going to do well in the second half of the fight, but it was not to be. The power of Davis, too much for him. And the mentor, Floyd Money Mayweather, reacting 
to Gervonta Tank Davis's 23rd knockout in his 24th professional fight. All 24 wins. And Gervonta Tank Davis on Halloween night delivers the monster smash. The numbers, 55% uh, of the power punches landed by uh, Gervonta Davis, and many of them were potential knockout punches, but finally that uppercut did get the job done. Santa Cruz throwing more punches as we expected he might, and landing a fair number of them as well. But it was the power of Davis ultimately that got the job done and many of those 80 power punches were in fact uh, some version of that left uppercut but he landed the perfect one. Let's make it official. Here's Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen we have the time. Two minutes 40 seconds in round number six. He is the winner by way of knockout. He is still undefeated. And now, the WBA super featherweight and lightweight champion of the world, Gervonta Tank Davis. <laughs> Gervonta Tank Davis, hoping his power will power his unassailable ascent to mega stardom. That's how you close a show. That's how you close a night that featured four fights, four knockouts, none more memorable than the one we just witnessed. It was a. We'll take a look back at the keys to victory and. As we said at the beginning of this match with the keys, the left hand would be the key for. Davis he lands it in a variety of ways the uppercut tonight was the most important method but they're a kind of a straight left hand and throughout this fight the left was his calling card in terms of power and and you know Santa Cruz took some powerful left hands look at that one there's an uppercut like the one that would end the fight so it wasn't as if he didn't get hit with big ones before but that was the one that closed the show and uh, thankfully Leo Santa Cruz uh, is OK and was able to get up from that. But uh, tremendous display of left handed punching. Let's bring in our unofficial score Steve Farhood. What were your scores at the time of the uh, stoppage. Well let's look at the unofficial scores for, or the official scores first my friend. Yeah the uh, all three judges at Davis ahead 48 47 close fight. They gave Santa Cruz uh, the first and second rounds, but they gave Davis the third, fourth, and fifth. So Davis was taking control. You look at my card. I gave Santa Cruz only one round, the second round. I thought Davis's power was the difference from the beginning in a fight where obviously both fighters landed plenty of punches. Official scores again. Um, Glenn Feldman gave the first two rounds to Santa Cruz. David Sutherland gave the first two rounds to Santa Cruz. And then it was all Davis after that.